Hey everybody. Um, doing a lot of stuff today, but uh, there's a little bit of a dead zone. I gotta wait for stuff to dry, uh, paint-wise. So, a um, bunch of people said that they really liked my uh, how-to. So, I'm gonna whip out another quick how-to. I'm gonna be using some uh, kind of specialized tools here. Um. So we're gonna go over some uh, some tips and tricks. Um, the first thing I want to do is um, usually when you're doing like a sci-fi model, um, one of the things that will immediately make it or break it is how you portray your moving parts. And um, a lot of the sculptures out there, a lot of the professional sculptures out there, the difference between them looking cool or looking dorky is how the sculptor portrayed these. So, um, I'm going to go over uh, that and uh, I'm going to go over hydraulics and I'm going to go over uh, rubber boots. Because you want your moving parts to seem realistic. If you blow that, you blow the illusion. The simplest thing in the world you can do is add hydraulics. Now you can use, I used a, a skewer. You can use, um, what is it for your ears? Q-tips, anything. Um, I know some people use um, like little metal rods, um, little fancy drink straws, doesn't matter what it is. Anyhow, you take one of these and you take tape. You can go to a dollar store, get the stuff real cheap, get a ton of it, and you won't need very much. All you do is you take your stick and you put it halfway across. Now the trick is, and this is pretty difficult, is to get it completely flat because if it's at an angle, you're going to screw it up. And you can test it out against the actual tape. See how that's level when you, when you look at it? If that's at an angle, it's going to roll on at an angle and it's going to, going to blow it. You can clean it up with a razor knife and whatnot, but you know why make it work harder than you need to? So I've got it lined up there, and oh good, I'm not running out of time too quickly. And you just roll it, and you keep on rolling it, rolling it. And you don't have to roll a ton of it. Probably only putting on about maybe, I don't know, three inches. Until it gets kind of fat. So that's kind of fat there. And then you just take a razor knife or, well, scissors will work too. Pull it out enough for your scissors to get in there. You, you don't want to cut this at an angle. You want it to look like a normal machined um, seam. So once again, you know, you want to keep that illusion of it being that way. So now what you have, let's see if I can get it. Now what you have is a hydraulic bar. And you can put this in between two corners of just about anything even from part to part. You see, whoop. You get the main idea. I'll hold it from behind. But you get the main idea. So it looks like this can compress and contract. Okay? So, that's how you do quick hydraulic bars, you know. You see them on back holes and everything else. Um, rubber boots. This is where you use a little, uh, hot wire tool. Um, you've probably seen these rocks done a million times. They're, uh, uh, they do like about a million little 
layers and they go all the way around it and it looks like desert stone and that's great I, I have nothing against that that technique but a lot of people they see one technique and they see one application and that's that's where the thought process ends you always want to take that technique and how many different things can I apply that technique to the more you can apply it to other things the better your stuff's gonna be and what I want to do is uh, use that same concept but I'm gonna make rubber boots turning it on turning it on do we have power? Okay, we do. Yeah, it's being a little bit of a butthead of late. I'm not sure why. But, there we go. See it's starting to smoke? All those poisonous fumes I'm uh, breathing right now? Okay. Turn it down a little bit. You want to have a lot of control here, so you don't want to crank it up like you're cutting through two inch thick poly. Okay. And we're not gonna use all of this. I mean, you could, but, yeah, I ain't worried about it. But you see how I've got my first layer. Now the tricky part is, is to have your valleys and peaks match up and don't be worried if they don't it's nice if you can but don't freak out if you don't Okay, so now I've got my rubber boot. You paint this black and you hit it with a dark gray dry brushing and it's gonna look just like a rubber boot. And then what you do, don't make a rookie mistake. When you place it, make sure you place it in such a manner that it looks like it can compress. You could put these, you know, on like a deck that you want to extend up to like a second story or just anything that requires a lifting or lowering process, okay? So that's how you do rubber boots. How much time do I got? Ooh, eight minutes. All right, this is gonna be yeah, I don't want to push this last one too fast. Um, because the next one is a, is a pretty important section that I want to cover, and what that's going to be is um, using scrap. Using scrap is very important because not only are you saving yourself money, you're saving yourself time, and you're giving yourself uh, potentially new ideas and directions that you wouldn't have gone in. So um, I've got something set aside for that, but as usual, 10 minutes is an eye blink. So I guess we will go do the bill, Bill's drawer, drawers thing. So we'll call today Moving Parts Day. I don't need a D30. Fourth and 10. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna laugh if I did this one. Oh, you found my miniature store. Okay. Now you get to see the kind of stuff I'm into. Um, beyond any shadow of a doubt, I am an undead person. Why? That's the first thing that ever hurt my character in D&D. These are ultra cool. Um, they're a bit expensive, but I mean, if you really want to trick out your uh, terrain, um, these pillars of good and evil from uh, from Reaper miniatures. I think it says, yeah, pillars of good and evil. Um, 
There's the, let's see, there's Evil Fighters, uh, Men in Arms, uh, what is this? This is from Void. Never, never tie yourself into just one thing. You know, look around, always look for something new, different, interesting. Oh yeah, I got two of these pillars, so I wanted to do one on the left and the right side. Um, these dogs. They're, uh, I use them over here. Where are they? Where are my orcs? Here we go. Well, I guess it's not them. I'll show you later, but you can use regular size wolves, put 15 millimeter figures on them, and they just look killer. So there you go. That's what's in Bill's drawers. Toys.